This week I'm tackling my hardest project yet and I'm going to be installing a secondary alternator. But to do it, I'm gonna to need to put my big extended Ford Transit on the lift to access my engine. This is a secondary alternator. My van already has one, but this will allow me to charge my solar batteries while my engine is running. And yes, I technically could charge my house batteries with the alternator that's currently in my van, but this will allow me to charge my house batteries much faster. After adding this, I should be able to charge all 600 amp hours of my house batteries to 100% in around two hours instead of eight hours, which is how long it would take me to do it now. In this luxury van build, I plan to have an AC unit, water heater, fridge, Fridge, incinerating toilet and even an air fryer so this secondary alternator is going to be a game changer Before I start this project, I'm going through and making sure that I have everything on this list, which I do. So now let's get started. Once I cut this belt, there's no going back because I do not have a spare belt. Now we are officially committed to this project. I was really intimidated when I first began this project, but it actually ended up being a lot easier than I anticipated. I think the hardest part was that a lot of the areas were hard to reach. Oh my gosh, that's impossible. That's seriously impossible. I don't know if I can get that off. And some of the bolts were hard to break loose, so I had to double up on my wrenches and use a breaker bar to break some of those bolts loose. I got a breaker bar and I was able to break it loose. The third bolt, the, t the highest one, is basically invisible from here. I have the mounting bracket here and I'm going to put it up and I'm gonna put never seize on it as well so that it doesn't bind if I ever, ooh! if I ever need to service it in the future. I wanted to make sure that I was fully prepared before diving in. And thankfully the manual for this was very easy and approachable. It's one of the best manuals I've ever read and looked at actually. It's day two working on the alternator. Yesterday I only spent a few hours working on it. And so far it's actually been a lot easier than I anticipated because this manual is so detailed. This is the nation's wake speed alternator and I got it from Van Life Outfitters, which is my preferred place to get van components because they're so organized. Their customer service is amazing and they have a lot of great resources on how to install some of these more complicated installations. So I will leave a link down in the description if you are interested in getting one for yourself. And I also did a more technical installation video on Van Life Outfitters YouTube page. So I'll have that linked in the description as well if you are more curious on the socket sizes I use, the exact places where I put the wiring underneath my vehicle, things like that, that will all be on that video. My van looks so crazy in the air like this. And Tori's over there working on hers, but hers is on the ground. <laughs> so this is where I left off. I have the alternator mounting bracket in. I also put the AC compressor back in as well, which was a little difficult. We have one bolt here, one right here. I don't know if you can see it. And then the third one isn't visible to me, but it's right above these wires. And so I had to just kind of feel around for it. This is like surgery and I just have to feel for it. I need my climbing belay glasses because my neck is really hurting doing this. And my belay glasses, it's basically like a mirror. And so you can look forward and see what's right above you. <laughs> I should pull those out. Thankfully, I figured it out. I got this back up and now we're working on stuff down here. So it'll be a lot easier, more visible and more clearance to do everything. So the next step is putting these two brackets in. And as you can see, this is the step I'm on in the manual. So it's very clear. This is the mounting bracket that I put on yesterday. And these are the two pieces that I'll be adding today, which is just gonna help put the harness carrier back in. All right, we're adding this next bracket. I'm working on the positioning right now. And I think I figured it out. This goes like this. And then we're gonna add a bolt right there. I'm using the rear mounting plate and I'm putting it up on this left side here.
I had to use this claw foot because nothing else was working, not even a short socket, but I got those torqued to spec. And now I'm going to put the secondary alternator in. I'm gonna add a little bit of never seize on these bolts. Okay, I'm holding everything so it doesn't fall out, hopefully, when I'm doing this. We got a really new exciting addition for the yurt. We haven't had anywhere to keep cold food, but I finally got a fridge. So this is our first day with cold food at the yurt. And to celebrate, I'm going to make a cheese board. So for this yurt, I decided to get this Anchor Solix Everfrost 2 electric cooler. And I decided to get this because I really didn't want a traditional fridge because I didn't want to have to get ice for it. I also didn't want to get a traditional plug-in one because it's not very portable. Oh, I dropped some cheese. This fridge, on the other hand, has a detachable battery, so I can take the battery out, charge it inside, and bring it back here. I can also use a wall outlet to charge it or a car outlet, and I can hook it up to a 100-watt solar panel. Oh my gosh, it's so cute! Wait, I think I actually have an attachment to hold this. There are also a lot of different attachments you can get for this fridge. I got a pack of attachments that has this cup holder here, and there are honestly so many other features, but I'm going to leave the link in the description so you can look over the specs and see if it's a good fit for yourself. And if it is, be sure to use my code YAK10 for 10% off. I'm installing the belt for the alternator. It's going to go around the crank pulley, the OEM, AC compressor, the alternator, and the automatic tensioner. I put the belt over everything except the tensioner for now. And then I have this breaker bar. It's a small one and I cut this PVC piping to put over it. And I can put it on the frame of this car so that I don't have to hold it up while I put the belt on the tensioner. Towards the end of the installation, there was a belt I had to put back on and that took quite a while. I had to recruit some help. I had to try doing it multiple different ways so that was definitely difficult and then came the wiring which was another challenge in the process because i had to run this massive wire from the alternator to my battery system across the entire underside of my vehicle and that was difficult because there is a muffler and there's a catalytic converter that gets really hot and I had to figure out how to avoid those areas that get really hot. I also needed to go around the wheel and that was another problem area where it took me several hours to figure out how to route it around the wheel well without the wheel hitting the wire. So right here behind the wheel well, there's two holes. I just used one and I put two of the hose clamps for both the positive and negative wire and now we're gonna screw it in. I also wanted to make sure that the wire was really sturdy. It wasn't going to sag. It wasn't going to fall. So I used these hose clamps for the entire process. And where I couldn't do hose clamps, I used zip ties. But I tried to never rely solely on zip ties for an extended period of time. I wanted there to always be a screw, a bolt, or um, a hose clamp, ideally because it is such big wire and heavy wire as well. I have now finished with the wire. The loom is up. And the next step is taking this cable for the wake speed and we are going to put it in between the four out wire. Living in my last van for several years, I got an idea of what I really wanted and didn't want in this van. And this is my dream van, so I really wanted it to feel like a house. I wanted to feel like a luxurious space where I didn't have to worry about conserving on water too much or worrying that my appliances won't work because I won't have enough solar or anything like that. So having a secondary alternator was really important for me because I knew that even on a short drive, I would be able to charge my entire battery system in just a couple hours, which is a huge upgrade. and and is honestly just such a game changer because there are areas and times where you're not getting solar for extended periods of time. And I encountered that a lot in my last van build where I wasn't able to cook on my induction cooktop or use a blender or anything because I didn't have enough solar and because maybe I was in the Pacific Northwest or something somewhere a little more cloudy for an extended period of time. I finished installing the alternator underneath the vehicle, finished wiring everything, and brought the wire into the back of my van through 
this pillar here, which actually has a port out below and there's just this little rubber square top that you can pop out. Now the wire is in the van and I'm going to hook it up to the links as well as the smart shunt. For the positive, we're going into this smart shunt. Sounds a crimson wire. Sounds of crimson wires. Oh yeah. You're using my song. Wow. Thanks. After finishing this installation and testing it out, confirming that it works, I would definitely say I recommend this secondary alternator to people. It really depends what your experience on the road is gonna be and your priorities. If you don't have as many appliances, maybe this won't matter to you. But for my needs and my van, and I think for a lot of people, it's really nice to have that backup source. And like I said, two different ways to do the same thing. I have 600 amp hours of batteries. That's quite a bit of batteries. And to know that I can fully charge my battery system in just a couple hours driving is pretty wild to me. And it would be even quicker if I had a smaller battery capacity as well. That is the end of this video. And if you guys have noticed, maybe you haven't, but I have a new friend here. We actually don't know his name because we just got him, but this is my parents' new puppy. So I'll be showing him a little bit more in my following videos. I'm so happy. I love him so much. So everybody say hi. Give me name suggestions down below. Be sure to check out the link in my description for the alternator I use. And with that, I'll see you guys next week on Sunday. Bye. <laughs> say bye. You're so cute. You want to go potty or something?